didn't say he hit it poorly. But again, it's hard at first to really commit to a little thicker on some of these shots. The ball tends to cut a little cleaner on the slick table. I don't think I've ever seen a ball hanging so perilously on the edge of a pocket. You're still looking at it now thinking it's going to fall in. Yeah, and I certainly if the green six was not in the way, he could make the blue two. But trying to predict the cue ball path when a ball lays so deep, very difficult. I'll tell you, I don't even know if I kick at this. What is the future? Almost always, if you happen to make it, you follow this ball in. Now Jason's trying to see if he can tie something up, maybe move the eight into position by the brown seven and just surrender ball in hand. Because, again, even with ball in hand, it's not the easiest to move the cue ball down after, off a ball that's so deep. So we'll see. Okay, kind of moved the three a little bit. I'm not sure if that's going to help Copini. I think it is. If he'd managed to pull that off and get on the three, it would have been a lovely way to inject some early energy into the European course. Yeah, and again, that's why he doesn't want to burn an extension here with ball in hand with a ball hanging, right? But that's just how tricky it is. Got to hit downward, I think. Yeah, this may get lost. You, you got to know you got to hit downward on that ball. Can't hit a high ball. It's got to be more of a low spin. Only one ball gone off the table, and we've already seen plenty of event and incident. Yeah, well, you could see a little hook right there about a foot and a half after the cue ball had hit the two, and that's what high English does. Michael, you know, for brand new felt, of course, slick conditions, perfect, perfectly clean cue ball and, uh, and object balls. I'm very impressed with this table uh, for a day one, and now that beginning of day two, it's played pretty difficult. Yep. Yeah. Nothing difficult about the eight and nine for sure to finish this. So it took them until rack five to get one on the board in the team match last night. Jason Shaw has delivered straight away at the start of this second day. Both of them had their chances. It's Shaw who delivers off that ball in hand. Looky here, open hand bridge to break the ball. So that tells you he's taking speed off, and we don't see that much from the big man. Oh, yeah, definitely took some speed off. And a oh, kick on the nine. And he's taking the nine off as well, all the, the way round. off the table. And it's another golden break. Eklund Kachi, the man who was one rack away from being world champion earlier in the year, has delivered a golden moment here. And all of a sudden, 2 0 Europe. Yeah, and that's, I think, three golden breaks for Team Europe so far in this Moscone. Jason Shaw had two last night. One of them he didn't even notice. He turned away from the table. He's got to add some left spin to cut the two into the nine, coming back two rails behind the red three, I think. And the two's going to come up. So this is a true tester if he takes it on. Usually when the players attack here on the slick table, tend to overcut this ball, and sometimes badly. It's impressive to do that, isn't it? Looking on, seeing his whole team there, knowing what he's playing for early on this second day of the Reyes Cup. Well, again, the decisions is what has been so impressive, and then maintaining the stroke. I mean, we all know how good his stroke is, but, oh, that ball got a big kick. Huge, huge kick. Yeah, I think we're going to look at a replay, but I'm not sure we even need to. It was so obvious. And here it is. It kind of turned sideways a little at contact there. A little fortunate again with the snooker, unfortunate with the kick. But he's been so settled with the stroke. And, you know, to the average fan, it's sometimes hard to tell. But I think the more you watch, you'll see the differences. 
And he's going to get another chance. All right, he was trying to kick and bang that ball around the table, holding the cue ball on the bottom cushion. It's a little off the mark. And now Duong looking to get Team Asia off the mark. In this night two opening match. Okay, just stick to what you've been doing, really. A little low left English to draw the cue ball. Definitely a tester. Excuse the low left. I'll just add a little inside, go three rails. I would say he's the only player on both teams that shoots it that way, and that's 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 a confident man. All right, don't race for the side here. I don't think so anyways. It really sets up to just kind of come two rails across and play the eight in the corner, that being the lower left. Happy to get that brown down in that upper right corner. That could have brought back a few bad memories. Yeah, had a bad miss on the seven in the decisive rack last night, which he lost to David Alcady. Similar to this shot, really. That seven ball missed. But not missed this time, so Duong Kuo Kwang delivers Team Asia's first rack. Europe's lead is now 2-1 in the first match of this second day. Is he not attacking here? This, this ball's cuttable. Okay, decided to pass. Well, why would that be? That is a surprise. Yeah, I mean, it was steep, but you had to play short side position on the three and take it to the lower right corner, so maybe he felt this safety was... Uh, not only very doable, not going to miss that, but maybe a little tougher. Yeah, he's got to bend this, Michael. He's got to hit down with draw. He's got to let it have time to take. Foul strike. Actually took too much. Ball in hand. Please stop. Just worth remembering, of course, this is rack four, so if it was to go the distance... This would be the deciding rack in the opening team match. And for LKD, that would be for the second night in a row. Yeah, people question, you know, who's going to play that Hill Hill match in these teams. Foul strike. Oh, wow, he miscued. He's he he miscued with the 2-9, I think. Now, did, is the four in the way? I don't think it is. Restart the clock. What a turning point. We saw a huge miscue from him in a big moment in the Hanoi Open. Crucial, crucial game to advance. Well, what an eventful rack that turned out to be, even with very few balls being potted in it. So the miscue from al Qaeda handing Yap ball in hand, a combination in the side, and suddenly we're level again. shake there from Carlo but it's the natural he's kind of always had that believe it or not maybe the moment <laughs> adding a bit more now do you kick at this softly because I mean I'd like to stay on top of this three ball not really anything offensive great hit watch out five watch out five Carl Boys, the European captain, looking on there at a lifetime undefeated record in the Moscone Cup. In terms of the overall outcome, he was involved four times as a player, twice as assistant captain, and Europe won every time. Had an incredible winning personal percentage Extension as well, Carl. I think Carl's like, I was kind of that way. I really liked the pressure. And not saying I always perform perfectly, just you just got to just got to kind of fall in love with it. None more than the Moscone and now the Reyes Cup. Beautiful strike there. And that could really settle Carlo in. One of two players on the Asian team from the host nation, Philippines. A player with a massive history in the game. One of only 13 players to have won both of the two biggest individual titles. 
the World Championship in the US Open. Two balls away then from giving Asia the lead for the first time this evening. Remember, they were 2 0 down. So it was a cagey enough start to rack five. But Beato has Asia swept over the, the line. Three in a row for Team Asia. Now they are in front. Yeah, Sean was going along so nicely in defence of his Hanoi Open title last week, and a lot of people were saying they fancied him to win it again, but from 9-6 up in the quarterfinals against Copigny, lost four racks in a row, and that was that. Yeah, well, some will say it was unlucky, and it was in a sense, because Jason played really well. It was just two key mistakes, and I think at 9-6, was it a dry break at that if, is that right, if I remember correctly? Yeah, there were certainly two key moments we were looking back on at the end, and Early on in the match, actually, Shaw could have had a really, really good lead, and really there would have been very little danger of a turnaround, but didn't take those opportunities, and Co made him pay in the end. All right, playing the safety. I kind of like the kiss shot on the five myself. It's got to go a little bit. It's got to go. And I thought he might attack off the right side of the one, trying to kiss the purple five in. Yeah, and it was really the two of the more simple shots that got away from Jason, one on the seven, one on the eight. It's all these he's knocking in, it seems like. Like the medium tough shots, especially with pressure. Efren Reyes, 70 years of age now. This event as much a tribute to him as anything else and always it's achieved in the game. And how he's inspired so many to take it up here in this country of 100 million people. This to level. For the second time tonight, Jason Shaw wins the rack against Copenhagen. Yee. So it's now 3-all, and the golden break man, Eklund Kachi, will be on the table next. All right, could kill this. Looks like he's going out to the center. And it's going to end up short, so four to the five could be a little tricky. Does he have to bump the five? It looks like it. He actually came to the venue with us today in the van, and you were sitting up front talking to him. Did he say anything interesting about how things had gone last night? No, I think they loved it for their first time in, you know, this type of setting. He liked being, he got behind that ball. He was hoping for a little more of a, a direct contact into the purple five and get the short pocket. But uh, it seems like to me he just enjoys it. Know, and just like talked about when he lost that European Open and maybe a few other occasions at time making some deep runs and didn't get there, he learned from it. And, and when you learn from it, you know, you kind of tend to enjoy what's going on as well. Watch, ooh, what a thump on the nine. That may have gotten lost in that side, but that'll get the crowd going. What a huge game this this here, this seventh rack, because if he can get out, he's going to guarantee his team, at least at Hill Hill, to get to break the balls in this opening match. And put a lot of pressure on the next European to break in rack number eight. Yeah, that will be Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Difference in the upper echelon, and now he's number six, and we all know he's a top ten guy. Because they really attack. You know, they don't let the moment really kind of slow them down, and for the most part, uh, they stay really uber aggressive. And once you do that, you start to experience it, and you realize you can get it done. Kind of a little sloppy there with the tip position, but should be okay. Well, if he completes this here, the way this run out has been made 
Really going to ignite the crowd in his home country. This to get Asia to the hill. And they lead again at 4-3. He's getting crack. the crowd going. He's getting a high five from his legendary captain. With the seven in the way to get back on the five later. Lots going on in this rack. I think he got the wrong side of this. Efren recognized it quickly. You saw him stand up behind him. Huge shot in the rack to get the clearance. I think it's cuttable, Michael. In fact, I'm, I know it is, but he can't avoid that four and seven. So here, don't take your eye off the prize, which is pocketing that red three. Well, you look dumbfounded by that, Jeremy. Yeah, I don't think he really predicted that because that gets you a little on the wrong side of the of the pink to really dress up on the on the purple five. But he recognized quickly he's just going to have to take some distance on the purple five. And I really like that little look right there, looking the pink to the hole. talked about how eyebrows were raised when he got the pick and some people felt he might be a bit of a weak link in the Asian team but sometimes it's not as much about form as it is about standing up to the moment and he has done that so well so far in this Reyes Cup oh, this is really the shot and they know it look at Team Asia oh, they love it in perfect position now and you know I didn't get to watch him much of course we're always busy at those tournaments and I didn't get to watch him in Hanoi but what I'm impressed is he's really improved his tactical side we've seen him win a ton of matches and do it with the offense because he's so pure fundamentally but uh, he set himself up in a lot of these games in yesterday's match really with a lot of great safes almost there Oh, boys looking on as his team stand two balls away from a losing start to day two. And it's swung one way and the other so far this Reyes Cup. There's never been more than a point in it either way. And two and out. Two over, wins the match. Who had such a glorious chance to clinch the opening point for Asia in the team match on day one has produced a wonderful run out to get them over the line at the start of this second day.